And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. It's Labor Day weekend and the unofficial end of summer. For some of us, that's a tougher time than for others, but fall is ahead and we all look forward to the beginning of school, the start of football season, and the coloring of the leaves and all the other things that fall brings to us. This week was also the end of America's longest war, a totally and completely unacceptable conclusion. No matter what you thought of our involvement in Afghanistan, you had to agree that it should not have ended this way. This is a tragic failure of leadership of gigantic proportion, the magnitude of which is going to take years to fully understand and comprehend. Hopefully historians will write it correctly because this week truly marks days that will live in infamy. And now there must be accountability, and it has to start at the top. The buck truly does stop on the big desk in the Oval Office, and we need to have accountability for what happened because we left Americans behind. How many? We really don't know. We were told by our government that they simply didn't make it to the airport. But our policy of leaving no one behind was forgotten and forsaken. And we need to bring justice to those young soldiers and military fighters who lost their lives last week. They were infants when we began our involvement in Afghanistan, and they were taken from us too early and too tragically. America demands and America deserves real leadership. We deserve it at all levels of our government. And I think people are going to increasingly be looking at true leaders who demonstrate the qualities necessary, the guts and fortitude to take leadership and to do it for the good of the American people and for our cause, for it is just. And it is Labor Day weekend, a time to celebrate the amazing and tremendous accomplishments of the American working men and women. Since the late 19th century, Labor Day has been a part of our national fabric. Oregon declared it as a, na as a state holiday, excuse me, in 1887. By the time the federal government got around to naming it a federal holiday, 30 states had done so following Oregon's lead. And it's interesting to note that whether your name was Mugwire or Mickwire, you can lay claim to the birth of Labor Day. One, the head of the Central Labor Union, the other, a vice president of the AFL, both have true claim to the origins of Labor Day. And it's interesting to note, as we run through Labor Day weekend with all the picnics and bashes that we will have to celebrate American working men and women, what they have done and where the movement is today. Because increasingly, labor leaders, particularly among those unions that make things, deliver things, etc., are coming with their membership to the conservative and Republican side because they realize that that four-letter word, J-O-B-S, is so vitally important and that economic growth and our future prosperity is tied to job creation. And job creation comes when you have a healthy, economy and a growing economic environment. So celebrate the American men and women who have made this nation so great. Here in my home state of Pennsylvania, the well-muscled arms of working men and women created the great manufacturing boom from the late 19th century through the 20th century. And we're now looking to reclaim much of that for our state. College football season is already underway and the pros start now. And with football season underway, Midnight Madness can't be far behind. So as we look to college basketball already, I'm reminded of George Raveling, George the Rave Raveling, a great player at Villanova University before they won those national championships, and a tremendous coach and commentator. He had something else very special in his life. He was a security person, I think a volunteer, at the famous I Have a Dream speech in Washington, D.C., which we celebrated and observed last weekend. George Raveling realized at that moment what a tremendously powerful speech he had just heard. And so when it concluded, he approached the platform and asked Dr. King if he could have a copy of the speech. Martin Luther King handed him the original text of that speech. George Raveling has had it all these years. He's been offered millions of dollars for it, but he recently gave it to Villanova University, who then gave it as a permanent loan to the Smithsonian Institute so that all Americans can enjoy it. So kudos to you, George Raveling. If you get a chance, 
go to the Smithsonian and check it out. Because for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week. Happy Labor Day.